everyone! Welcome back to another installment in my Japan travel series. This time we're spending about two days in the beautiful city of Hiroshima. As we were planning our most recent trip to Japan, we wanted to try to find at least one city we hadn't been to before, and we couldn't have picked a better place. This bustling city of just over a million people can easily be accessed via bullet train from Tokyo. If you're like us and purchased a Japan Rail Pass, the entire journey is 4 hours and 50 minutes, and it will consist of one transfer, usually in the Osaka station. There are direct trains, but they're not ones you can use with the Rail Pass. And here's a pro tip. When you're booking your ticket, ask to be seated on the right side of the train, next to the window. As you're passing through, you're going to see an amazing view of Mount Fuji. Before I digress too far, let's get back to Hiroshima. Once we arrived at the station, we went to check into our hotel and drop our bags off before heading out and exploring the city. But before you leave the station, I want to share a little bit of deliciousness with you. The name of the place was Baked Cheese Tart. The crust is unbelievably flaky and buttery, while the filling is perfectly balanced. They're pretty reasonably priced at 216 yen a piece, which is about 2 US dollars. I definitely recommend grabbing some of these. After eating the scrumtralescent cheese tarts and heading back to the hotel, we headed off on our first adventure. We wanted to go see the beautiful Itsukushima Shrine. Located about an hour outside of the city, it was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well as a national treasure by the Japanese government. To get there, you just need to take a train and then a ferry. The whole trip takes about an hour, and if you have the Japan Rail Pass, both the ferry ticket and the train ticket are completely free. Hopefully when you guys go, you're going to have the same weather we did. It was sunny, not a cloud in the sky. We had amazing views both on the train and the ferry. Once we got off of the boat, we were pretty shocked to see wild deer all over the island. We weren't expecting it, Yeah, I had seen tons of videos of this online, but I never remembered seeing any deer, so it was a pretty welcome surprise. There are signs posted asking you not to feed the deer, but if you want to feed deer, I got a place for you. Just keep an eye out on a future video. But do be careful if you're buying street food because these deer, some of them are a little aggressive and they're going to try to come for your food. Uh, but some of them are actually really, really friendly. And if you want to, you can go up and pet them. The main attraction, which is also called the Miyajima Gate, is actually just a short 5-10 to 10 minute walk away from the ferry. After we spent a little bit of time exploring the area, we decided to head over towards the gate. Unfortunately, as we approached it, we realized that it's under renovations for the uh, 2020 Olympics. This kind of actually became a little bit of a running joke for us because there were several other main attractions throughout the country that we wanted to visit that were either closed for renovations ahead of the 2020 Olympics or were closed for New Year's. The beautiful gate was covered by a semi-transparent tarp, so you were still able to kind of get a sense for how it was, but it definitely was a disappointment because it wasn't something we were expecting. So hopefully if you get a chance to visit, it's after the renovations are done because it's actually quite stunning from what I've seen from the photos. If you pay a small fee, you can actually go inside the shrine and see all of the really cool buildings around it and you can get some even better photos of the, of the shrine that are unobstructed from everything else. The best time of day to go really depends on what you want to see. If you go when the tide is very high, the gate actually looks like it's floating in water, which is pretty cool. Or if you go when the tide is really low, then you can actually walk out towards the gate and get some really cool photos up close. The island has a real charm to it, and it was a great way to spend the morning and afternoon. Not far from the shrine is a narrow street filled with tons of souvenir shops, restaurants, and lots and lots of street food. This is where you're going to find probably one of the most famous local snacks to this area, which is called the Momiji Manju. It's a buckwheat and rice cake in the shape of a maple leaf. Traditionally, it's filled with red bean paste, but we actually found a few shops that were selling some that had other fillings like chocolate and caramel as well. We even found this cool stand that instead of using like a buckwheat outer shell, it had a croissant outer shell, and those were really, really good. Definitely recommend trying those. After spending the better part of the day there, we decided to head back to the city. By the time we got back, it was dark, so we kind of explored the area nearby our hotel. We found this really cool shopping area that had tons of restaurants, bars, and arcades. We ended up having dinner there, playing a few arcades, and calling it a night. The next day, we woke up early in the morning and headed out to see the other famous UNESCO site in Hiroshima, the Peace Memorial Park. This memorial was dedicated to the victims of the nuclear bomb attack during World War II and serves as a continual reminder of the atrocities of war. There are several sites to see in this area, so don't be surprised if you spend several hours here. 
We didn't have a lot of time remaining before we had to catch our train to our next city, so we wanted to make one final stop at the Hiroshima Castle. It's not too far away from the Peace Memorial Park, but once again when we were there, it was actually closed. This time it was closed for New Year's, so we were only able to see the outside. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I really appreciate any comments and feedback you can provide in the comments below. Have you had a chance to visit any of these destinations? I'd love to hear what your experience was. As always, I'll make sure to put all the information for the places I visited down in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and subscribe for future content. Until next time, stay curious.